Welcome to the Harper Classroom. I'm Dr. Harper. This video is on MRP, Material Requirements Planning, Part 4, Multiple Items. This video is Part 4 in a four-part series and will use the material presented in Parts 1, 2, and 3. Let's start with the inputs. The inputs to the MRP is the Bill of Materials, the Master Production Schedule, and the Inventory Records File. The output is a report, and the report represents the inventory policy which is when to order and how much to order of every item in your multiple item inventory. So let's first look at MPS. The MPS is the end item demand over time. The MPS quality is the MPS entries are correct and the MPS entries are updated because these values will change over time. Next, let's consider the bill of materials. The bill of materials for this video will consist of the end item, A item, B item, C item, and D item. So let's consider the bill of materials in more detail because the bill of materials will be used in this video. First, the end item is a table. The table requires two A items, two laminated tops for every end item. Next, every end item requires four B items, which is a leg, four legs per table. Each A item requires three screws, where a screw is a C item, and every leg requires five screws, where the C item is a screw. Next, every C item requires two D item, which is two washers for every screw. So here we have a bill of materials of an end item, an A item, and a B item, and then C item in two places, and then a D item in two places but the C item has two different sources or two different parents and the D item is in two places but it has the same source and same parent. Now for the bill of materials quality the relationships are correct, they're complete because if there's a 2D for a C at one place there needs to be a 2D for a C in another place in the bill of materials and they're updated. As the design changes the bill of materials has to adequately reflect the relationships. Next is the inventory records file. This video will consider these five entries. First, the lead time. Time between when an order is released and an order is received. Safety stock. Inventory carried to guard against stockout. QD equals a lot size discipline. And notice we have three types, lot for lot, fixed, and minimum. And the end item, the B item, and the D item you can see are fixed lot size disciplines. The A item is a minimum lot size discipline, and the C item is lot for lot. Next is the beginning inventory, projected stock balance at the beginning of the MRP, and finally the schedule receipts, future receipts of past order releases. These three inputs are used by MRP to generate the inventory policy of every item in the bill of materials. But the inventory policy is contained in the planned order release row of the MRP. So this video will generate the MRP of every item, pull off the planned order release row, and that will define the inventory policy. So let's start with the end item. The end item MRP will use the master production schedule and the end item row of the inventory records file. First, we copy the master production schedule into the gross requirements row of the end item MRP. Next, we copy the lead time, safety stock, and lot size discipline from the inventory records file on the right. The beginning inventory at the beginning of the projected stock balance of the MRP. And finally, the schedule receipt, 12 on May 4th. So on May 4th, our schedule receipt then will be 12. Then, complete the projected stock balance row. Complete the planned order release row by following the instructions in MRP videos for Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. Now, the planned order release row of the end item MRP is the inventory policy for the end item. So now, let's look at the A item. The A item uses this information in the bill of materials in the A item row in the inventory records file. So, let's focus on that information to generate the A item MRP. First, we copy down the lead time, safety stock, and lot size discipline on the right for reference. The beginning inventory at the beginning, and the schedule receipt is 24 items on May 2nd. 
The bill of materials information indicates we need two A items for every end item. That information is copied on the right in the gross requirements row for reference. The procedure is go to the source item MRP, which is the end item. Go to the planned order release row. Now the logic. A planned order release is a plan to begin the production of 24 end items on May 5 and 12 end items on May 6. If each end item requires two A items, then the gross requirements of the A item will be 2 times 24 is 48, 2 times 12 is 24, where the planned order release of the source item, which is the end item, is multiplied by the bill of material multiplier to yield the A item gross requirements. The projected stock balance row and the planned order release row then is generated by following the instructions for parts 1, 2, and 3. And the planned order release row is the inventory policy for the A item. Now the B item. The B item will use this information in the bill of materials and the B item row in the inventory records file. So again, let's focus on this information to generate the B item MRP. Again, we copy down the lead time, safety stock, and lot size discipline on the right, the beginning inventory at the beginning, and the schedule receipts 88 on May 3rd. Next, the bill of materials is copied over here where the end item is the source item and the multiplier is 4. We go to the end item, which is the source item. We go to the planned order release row. And since the multiplier is 4, 4 times 24 is 96 and 4 times 12 is 48. So the gross requirements for the B item then become 96 and 48. The projected stock balance row and the planned order release row is completed by following the instructions for parts 1, 2, and 3. The planned order release row is the inventory policy for the B item. Now let's look at the C item. The C item uses this information in the bill of materials and the C item row in the inventory records file. So we focus on this information, but notice this time C has two sources. C has an A source and a B source. So we'll look at each one of these separately. First, the A source. We copy that information on the right-hand side of the gross requirements row, where A is the source item and 3 is the multiplier. Then we go to the A item, MRP, which is the source item, the planned order release row. And since the multiplier for the A source is 3, we have 20 times 3 is 60, 22 times 3 is 66, and that represents the gross requirements from the A source. Next, the B source. We copy that information with a B source and the multiplier of 5. We go to the B item MRP, which is the source item. We go to the planned order release row, and since the multiplier is 5, 5 times 8 is 40, 5 times 48 is 240, and that represents the gross requirements from the B source. Now that we have the gross requirements from the A source and B source, we add them together, and that becomes the gross requirements for the C item. Then we copy the information from the inventory records file, the lead time safety stock and lot size discipline, the beginning inventory, and the schedule receipts, and then the projected stock balance row and the planned order release row is completed by following the instructions in parts 1, 2, and 3. In the planned order release row of the C item MRP is the inventory policy for the C item. Next, let's look at the D item. The D item MRP will use this information to bill of materials and the D item row in the inventory records file. So we focus on this information. But in the bill of materials, even though D is represented twice, it still has only one source item, C. And the reason it's repeated is because in order for C to be correct and complete, you need two Ds to define that C. So accuracy in the Bill of Materials requires 2D for every C. So we copy the information from the inventory records file, the lead time, safety stock, and lot size discipline on the right, the beginning inventory, and the schedule receipts, 
And then the bill of materials then just becomes the C item is the source item and the multiplier is two, only one relationship. We go to the C item, which is the source item. We go to the planned order release row. And since the multiplier is two, two times 300 is 600, two times 66 is 132. And that represents the gross requirements for the D item. The projected stock balance row and the planned order release row then are completed following the instructions in parts one, two, and three. And the planned order release row is the inventory policy for the D item. Now we can generate the inventory policy using the planned order release row of the MRPs. The POR from the end item MRP, the POR from the A item MRP, the POR from the B item MRP, the POR from the C item MRP, and the POR from the D item MRP. So this re represents the inventory policy of every item in the bill of materials. This has been an introduction to generate a multiple item inventory policy using MRP. The inventory policy, along with the MRPs and input information, can be used within Sales and Operations Planning, SNOP, in areas such as inventory control, production planning, and sales. The technique of MRP, instead of being applied to internal production, can be applied externally to distribution as distribution resource planning. Moreover, the organization and control of information that MRP provides can be coordinated upstream with supplier relationship management and downstream with customer relationship management. Therefore, MRP is a fundamental tool within the successful application of ERP systems within a supply chain. This ends the video MRP Part 4 Multiple Items. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.